And we are going to be seeing two of them in our very first matchup. Uh, Mac Meller, the number one seed, and Josh Sokol. So a very exciting start to this morning, I would say. I would say so as well. So it looks like they've already uh, taken the boards, uh, the tiles off the board and into the bag, which means they're ready to start. Here's the handshake. And it looks like Mac will be drawing first. Okay, a quick opening play here by Mac of Pudgy. I didn't actually see what his other two tiles were. I guess some people might play Pudgy with the P on the double so that you don't put a U beside a multiplier square, but I don't think the U is that dangerous. So I would definitely take the extra points with Pudgy where he played it. Uh, now we see the rack, so this will help. Josh has an X and a C, as well as a bunch of one-point tiles. So the, the obvious play, of course, would be X, I, X, U, and I, D. Um, are you seeing anything longer that he might want to play? I mean, the X would be a priority for sure. Right. Uh, his other tiles are so bingo prone, bingo meaning playing all seven tiles to get the 50 point bonus. So you really want to get rid of the X and next to the U, you can put the X to form a really strange two letter word, XU, which is a Vietnamese currency. Um, you could play something longer to the G ending in ING, like Raxine. But I think after he has time to think about it, he's probably just going to play XI. You could play Radix, R A D I X, uh, through the D. That actually looks pretty good. It doesn't score quite as much because the X would only triple instead of quadruple. Uh, Ryan W in the chat's just lacing to set up the X. It's always good when you have a tile like the X or the Z to really try and set it up. So racing would have slotted in an I right beneath the multiplier square. Uh, and if it stayed open, he maybe could have scored big with it. The problem, of course, is that the C would have stopped uh, overlaps from happening. So maybe you would have had to play carrying or something so that you could then go above it. Uh, Mac, on the other hand, what do you think of that rack, Heather? Uh, I can't see what is beside the N. Is it an O? And oh, yeah, he's got four okay. E's, an I, an O, and an N, and he might have to exchange. Uh, yeah, at this, at this stage, exchanging yeah, makes a, a lot of sense. It's a good time to exchange, like you're saying, it's early in the game. Uh, there's not that much happening on the board yet. He could play Genie, I guess, if he wanted to play through the rack, but yeah, no, he's, he's going to make the right decision here. Um, so exchanging, of course, you score zero points, but leaving EN, it's putting himself in a pretty good position if he can draw the right stuff. Over to Josh. Josh only has one vowel. Uh, he's got duplicate Ls. We don't like duplicates in Scrabble. He has one tile that he could put next to ID for points, that being the D, but it won't score that much. I think he's probably gonna look for something ending in the Y, if I had to guess. Yeah, just like the double ball candy is the one that sort of jumps out at me. Right. Uh, plays all of the, the higher point tiles on his rack, despite leaving the double L. Yeah, uh, in the chat, what do you guys see on this turn? It's definitely not an easy turn. I think he's going to take some time with this one. Whereas Mac, if we look ahead, has drawn the first blank of the game. Um, he has clad set up on his rack right now. So we will see where he's thinking about playing that. Why clad, I guess. That's a really uh, difficult word to think about to see. It doesn't take an S. It's one of those really obscure words that doesn't tend to show up in NWL dictionary as much. I think it's like from the Shakespeare time. It, it just means dressed or clad, uh, but it, it takes that really strange front Y hook. So just to see this play is really well done by Josh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a five letter word they both know, but it's not one you think about. You, you're not looking at this board and thinking I'm going to start a word with the Y, right? So well done by Josh. Yep. It does put a, a out of space. And 
a vowel is the sort of thing Mac is looking for with his one vowel, one blank uh, potential bingo rack. Now, I'm not seeing a bingo right away. Uh, if he doesn't have a bingo, I'm sure he's going to look to play something with mid or vid, perhaps. I see in the chat, Billy says he would have played daily over this Y-clad play, which definitely makes sense, holding on to a vowel. And Josh now only has one vowel, so he would really... Um, wait, and daily. Oh, dally. Okay, sorry. Um, early in the morning here. Yeah, playing off both the L's. I know, Heather, the L is your least favorite tile. <laughs> oh, no, is that secret out? Yes, I... I was, it was, it was hard for me to sit there thinking that those two L's might stay on the rack, but um, right. Josh found a way to, to do, to play at least one of them and score. So yes, a much, a much yeah, better option. And, and Robin found maybe an even better way uh, of Clary, C-L-A-R-Y, because L and D is more synergistic than L and R as she's pointing out. So glad to see Robin in the chat and a very good comment. Um, Mac, meanwhile, is still looking for a bingo, which I don't think he's going to have. I don't have Quackle open, so I'm not positive. Uh, I'm going to rely on our fellow experts here to help us out. If he plays vid, I'm not really seeing what he could go down with. Uh, that would be the ideal play, because he doesn't want that V on his rack. So if not, he could play something like men, but leaving VRN is is not as good as he'd really want to do with the blank. I would also think he really does not want to close that, those playing lines with the blank on his rack. He would right. rather keep them open so he can use them to bingo. So that id spot playing down does seem like the play to, the place to play. No, but he's going to take it anyway. Okay, well, he is playing the play that our producer Sean suggested, Nav. Uh, one of the risks of this play, of course, is that it takes that back E. Mac knows he has an E, and uh, if the spot stays open, he can score big with it. So it's a touch aggressive in that sense, but at the same time, what else was he really supposed to do? So that looks like a pretty good idea, I think. Um, he'll, he will have bingos on his next turn. Uh, not the one that Sean is suggesting to us, not being uh, an NWL word, but... We'll see if the spot beneath nav stays open. Josh, the obvious play, of course, would be something like vow, but that would leave five consonants. So instead, he is going to play off with loan, I believe, yeah. That's a good idea, leaving as strong of a leave as he can here. It keeps the board a bit tight, partially obscures the nav back hooks. So will any of these bingos now fit on the board after Josh mm. kind of obscured things? I guess, yeah, there is one if he makes the blank an S and hooks it with slid. Um, I see Robin has found it in the chat. No surprise there. So vermins. Uh, of course, vermin being like bugs and Matt finds it within a couple seconds, no surprise, and looks like Josh has drawn really well, so perhaps we'll see uh, a couple bingos in a row here. I think if Vermins comes down, we could see something like Teenager immediately after to follow. Um, Mac will just take his time because if there were a bingo from the P, for example, it would hit the triple word score, so he doesn't want to just take the first bingo he sees. You can't be too hasty in this game. Uh, a bit of a pun there as Mac is playing a best of 100 set against HastyBot on Woggles.io. So check out Mac's YouTube channel. It, it will teach you everything you want to know about this game and more from the number one player right now in the NWL lexicon. And there it comes. Vermin's is going to come down. He'll circle the blank. Um, and yeah, I was looking at eights through the E, but Robin again is pointing out that Graydon goes beneath Nav in that spot we pointed out earlier. There are uh, at least one other seven in that rack. I see reagent as a, a word, but that wouldn't hit the double word score. 
Very important to know your hooks in this game. So nav, you want to know it takes a back E, it takes a back S, and of course, a back Y. For probably the only common word in that set uh, of navy. Another chat in the YouTube. Uh, hello to Paul Gallen. He's asking if the games are going to be uploaded to cross tables. He wants the Quackle files as he's writing a column for the Times in the UK. That's exciting. Um, I will make sure that someone from our production team gets back to you and hopefully we'll be able to send you the files. Uh, great. Yeah, Noah's the one who is entering the games into Quackle, so we appreciate all of his help behind the scenes. Uh, so you can message him if you need the, them directly, as I don't think they've been posted yet. So some other bingos he could have played, uh, Generate, through that E, as well as Teenager, like I said, uh, Reagent, Regental, Grantee. There are several bingos. I'm now looking at the Quackle feed. Yesterday, I relied on uh, Matt Canick to do it for me. It's showing that Graydon is the best bingo right now in the stream, but only by about half a percent of win percentage. It's saying Generate is really close. And probably the reason for that is look how dangerous that N he puts out in spaces. Um, if we're thinking about triple triples, Heather, which is plays that go, go across two triple word scores, mm -hmm. that N can be really dangerous, especially. Yeah, I N G. Yeah, but two -N -G. G's have been played. So yes, that is a consideration. Um, you can end words in A N E. A N T E N T I N E. So there's definitely some possibilities. Um, Mac doesn't have one of those sort of racks, but he can score pretty easily with the three tiles he just pushed to the right side of his rack. Um, so Does a T go in front of that honk to play? Is thonk good? Thonk? No, probably no. not. No thonk. But he could also play underlaps, I suppose. Um, if he had like an N, Robin is saying that he could play home underneath, which would score nicely, forming AH and then all the way across. You always love to hit not just one multiplier, but two. Um, now he's set up KET on the right side of his rack, Kent. So that would also play in the same spot. Uh, I think even though it would leave two T's, I would lead towards honk. It scores more points. Um, it's kind of close though. Which one would you play there, Kent or honk? Uh, I mean, I, I'm wondering if he's thinking of keeping the O for potential on the on the other triple line that's been opened and, and that it has yeah. more value therefore to him than the, than the E would have, but uh, I agree. I think keeping the two T's is uh, preferable. I, I'd rather keep score more points. Yeah, two T's aren't exactly great, but um, the ED that would be left with yeah. them really helps those two T's because uh, words do end in T-T-E-D. When you're thinking about leaves, you want to think about what sort of words they could form. And right, that synergy. Exactly, synergy. And on this Quackle, we are running simulations. We are asking our expert computer program, which play does it prefer? And by about two and a half points of win percentage, uh, it is preferring honk. So you and I at the moment do seem to have this right. We'll see if Mac uh, ends up playing what the computer wants. Just because the computer wants a play doesn't necessarily mean it's the right play, but it does score six more points, which certainly helps. Yeah, the game is close. Um, you, you would want to, to keep scoring as much as possible without Absolutely. giving up too much board equity. And I, I think that DTT combination isn't. Um, isn't either way, the simulation will have him as in a slightly losing position after his play. Uh, Kent was played. It sounds like we have just lost oh, okay. uh, the feed for a second. Uh, perhaps a poor internet connection, but 
Uh, we appreciate being told what was played. We'll get the stream back to you very shortly. While we're waiting, uh, let me just look at some of these comments here. Uh, Robin was pointing out how D and T are not synergistic, which I totally agree. Uh, but that E really does save that DT, as I was saying. Uh, so sometimes some tiles really don't work together. The UW one, Heather, that's one of the famous ones that doesn't work well. But if you have an N, then all of a sudden it's not quite as bad because you can form unwords and manage to get that W in. It's true. Synergy counts for a lot when you're making decisions on what letters to play, what letters to keep, what's left in the bag. Uh, you really have to be mindful of the potential combinations that you can make with those letters. And yeah, uh, th those kinds of little strategies, they don't have to be fancy words. They, they can be just words that are really commonplace. And if you, if you can see those patterns, uh, that's a real advantage. Absolutely. And Josh was looking at seven consonants, including three S's. So he plays jest. And what a good idea, because holding two S's, he knows it's very unlikely Mac's going to have the other one. And that's going to give him a chance to score really big on his next turn. So a great way to play through seven consonants there. Um, Max rack is a bit more balanced, but not exactly ideal. Maybe one reason he chose Kent is it's always nice to have the power of the H, a very nice scoring tile. He could play Rho, R-H-O, beneath Jest, uh, forming Sh to really use the power of that H. Um, Looks like he's setting up Doti to play under that G. Yeah, triple. that's clever. Uh, it hits the triple. You were thinking maybe he was keeping the O for that spot. The I also goes beneath the G. You have to really know your two-letter words. Yesterday in the game, we saw Sam Hollington, who I think we both know pretty well, being a mm -hmm. somewhat local player, play a different spelling of that word. He played D-H-O-O-T-I-E uh, for a bingo as part of his three bingo game to beat Joey Kraftchuk on stream. So a great oh, start wow. for Sam. Yeah, he played really well, and I was commenting that last year in the World Cup, he won the class prize uh, in the A division. So another good performance for Sam early on. Uh, you could also play Doti, as Billy points out, to the I and Vermins, uh, which would be interesting. Max going to play it below. Mm. Uh, play off one more tile. The I sort of helps the WT leave, but it's not really essential. I think he'd much rather go for ease, maybe another blank. Well, and Josh went from horror to uh, to looking quite nice. Yeah, that. and that's what Josh seems to be doing these days. He's been winning one tournament after another. I saw him post online uh, this morning that he stole two games yesterday and won one. So. Uh, that's what it takes sometimes to be 3-0. and You have to win some games that perhaps you shouldn't. He has Massier set up on his rack. Uh, are we seeing a spot for that? I don't. Uh, this is a, a bit tricky. It looks like there's should be somewhere to bingo with such promising tiles, but yeah. I haven't found it yet. Um, and now I see Noah has uploaded Quackle and there is in fact no bingo. So Josh will have to take his time though. Um, it's easy when we have the computer program to say he has no opportunity to play all seven of his tiles, but he doesn't know that. So Knowing he can't bingo, he could he could use that just spot he just set up. I think all of his best plays will use that spot. So does he want to play something like Reams, which is going to score the most, putting the M on the double uh, letter square, but it doesn't leave as strongly. So maybe Amis, the French word for friend, and coming from Montreal, we know that Josh knows such a word. That leaves much better with RS. And it also puts a less dangerous tile in the triple lane uh, an A instead of an R. So that's another nice consideration. So Josh is writing down his rack. When people don't write down their racks through much of the game, and then all of a sudden they start writing down the rack, that tends to be a pretty big tell, doesn't it, that they're getting close. 
which can be it's a bit gonna dangerous. So he's going to take the points here. Josh is a very offensive, aggressive player. And if you want to keep up with someone like Mac, you're going to have to score. Uh, Mac has towable set up on his rack. Uh, there's an anagram of that T bowl. But now that the R has been put up top, Mac is going to be looking for a way to reach it. Uh, looks like now he's thinking of T bowls. That would play through the A of Reams, and the B would double, and the whole play would double. So definitely a nice find by Mac, to no mm -hmm. one's surprise. We saw Mac draw both blanks in game one of this tournament when he beat Zach Ansel in a really well-played game by both players. I think there was just one slight misstep by Zach, um, but otherwise we were liking play after play, really top level play in game one of this tournament. And once again, Mac is drawing both blanks, which he is hard to beat with bad tiles, right? So getting him with good tiles is just, it can feel nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, Quackle does find one other bingo, the obscure bellwort. I think that's probably a type of flower or plant. Uh, Heather, you know a lot of trivia. Are you familiar with that word? It, I would agree. That's probably what it is, some, some sort of plant, but... Uh... I haven't uh, tested it as far as I know or used it for any other purpose. Not, right. not a common wart. <laughs> yeah, like I just know like St. John's wart. Uh, when yeah. you see that W-O-R-T ending, you're thinking some sort of a plant or root. Um, but it the mm -hmm. that would be a definitely an inferior bingo. It scores way less. T-Bull scores 82. His other bingos are scoring in the 60s. And if he doesn't play T-Bulls, the computer would actually rather him pass up his bingo, play another obscure word of bluet, uh, B-L-E-W-I-T, which almost sounds like it should be two words, which yeah, would score 45 really and still keep the blank, oh blank. So um, that's also a nice consideration. I think he definitely has to bingo here. Because well, we know he has seen T-Bowls. He, he had that queued up on right. his rack. So uh, yeah, And it's that. coming down. So again, it's a bit of a strange word, a tea bowl. Um, I guess it's just a dishware of some sort. I'm going to guess the same. I don't, it's probably exactly what it sounds like it is. Just a bit right. more, again, of an archaic word that we don't use too much, but probably right. everybody in the 1800s had tea bowls all over the place. Exactly. And now we drink our tea right out of a mug. <laughs> Hopefully tea mug will be added to the, to the dictionary here's soon. That would be a nice way. There you go. It's it's a sizable mug too. It's a, a it's it deserving is. of its own word. We should create tea mug to describe the vessels that we all use. I know I've complimented the size of your cereal bowls and I also like the size of your tea mugs. Uh, you guys yeah. do well to eat and drink large. Nobody goes hungry or thirsty in our house. That's true. Exactly. Uh, Heather and Crane are known for hosting a lot of events in Toronto. Uh, we have a great scene here, as well as uh, other players. You can see Robin in the chat, another great Toronto expert. Oh, thank you, Robin. She's actually given us an official definition for T-Bowl. Okay, no handle. That makes sense. I'm picturing one of those teas you drink with two hands and the steam like rises up in your face. Yeah, um, yeah something from, from another part of the world. Exactly. So Josh here, uh, has two I's, two S's, and then a T. And those are all sort of promising bingo tiles, whereas the B and the G really don't seem to work so well in this rack. Um, what are you seeing here as maybe a candidate play? Gosh. I mean, it's we're getting to the midpoint of, of the game and you really have to be mindful of board space right. and uh, what your opportunities are lying ahead with those two S's. I mean, we, they, they don't look very promising in terms of offering a, a bingo hook. Um, 
Yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. Um, the S is obviously a very valuable tile, being able to hook words, as in you put the S at the end of it and then form a word going in the other direction. The problem is the obvious place to put the S would be after that Y clad word, but that word doesn't take an S. So the S actually has less value than normal. The top right. play I'm seeing by Quackle is Jive, which is he's going to play it. But part of the problem is it starts to obstruct that R, which is one of his most important uh, lines in getting back in this game. But he does have the other big line from the P, and he could definitely open up the left side of the board, maybe playing through that eye of vermin. It's definitely not dead, but uh, the computer has him at about an 18% win percentage chance now. So he definitely has his work cut out for him. Uh, do you see all seven of Max Tiles here? He's got... Well, right now his thumb's obscuring, but... Uh... I know he has an O. Oh, he's an O, yeah. And then I can't remember what else was there under his thumb. It might be two O's, F-O-O. -O. Um, he has I-I-L-E to go with it. So he's picking up F... Oh, F-I-L-O. Okay, so he's playing Philo, a uh, type of dough, of course. Mm -hmm. Leaving I-I-L-E. But that's not the main reason he played that, is it? Well, it he could have played Folio and gotten... Yeah. Oh, no, didn't have. he didn't have two O's. He had two okay. I's. Sorry. But the reason he played that, of course, was to obscure bingo lanes. He's ahead. It's getting later in the game. He knows that mm -hmm. a bingo is what could really kill him. And he wanted to block the R of Reams because those bingos would score a lot. And he also took out the L, W, and S of t bowls. So that's a really nice play by Mac. Doesn't score a lot. The lead wasn't perfect. But it really accomplishes that main goal of killing the best lanes on the board. Especially because I believe Josh did have a bingo coming down from that S on his rack. That yeah, uh, and he has it set up right now. Uh, so sophists or sophists, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that. I'm assuming it has some sort of meaning like sophomore. Um, oh, one that uses sophism. So now I have to look up what sophism is. A plausible but fallacious argument. OK, that seems like a, a real word. Um, and okay, Sean is very familiar with this one, saying it's common in ancient Greek times. So, and so he's going to play Tophi here, or Tophi again, not sure how to pronounce it, but that opens up the left side of the board. The P is still open. And as long as he has a couple lanes, he definitely still has a shot. And Max, terrible uh, rack here with five vowels, will give Josh a chance to get back in this game. Um, so which lane would you be looking to block here, Heather? I mean, I, I th those lanes that Josh just opened up seem like the, the most dangerous and the, the highest priority in terms of blocking. I would probably look at a small parallel play, uh, either above or below that Tofi. The, the other uh, lane that I think we're, I keep not seeing is that P to the triple. I, I mean, an, an eight right. starting with P is a, a that would be a fairly a fairly common word if you if you had the right letters. So um, absolutely, and it could score like eighty three points. Say. But I would still, of course, prioritize blocking those um, playthrough uh, lines. I would want to block those new lanes too. The problem is he doesn't really have any tiles that are going to allow him to play more than let's say two tiles uh, to block there. He doesn't really have a clear way to do it. He set up Dulia, which would play at 1A. That's the top left of the board, forming Ag. So it, it does take out the T for bingos going up. Uh, it doesn't take out the bingos from the T going down. So Josh would be sort of happy to see a play like Dulia, even though it scores 24, because it would still keep a couple areas of the board open and give him a chance maybe to play Fife or something in the top right and maybe up a third lane and really give himself a chance to then finally draw into the tiles he needs to catch up. Um, and Quackle is running the simulation again, thanks to Noah. And to no one's surprise, Mac again seems to have found the best play. Dulia is simming best. Uh, I, I know the computer definitely doesn't play little blocking plays as much as maybe you or I, a more human player, might do. Uh, the best blocking play seems to be P 
P-I-U down there, which does take out the O and the P really well, but it doesn't address the T. So I think scoring 24, uh, really adding to his lead, makes a lot of sense. Uh, over to Josh. He has four vowels. He still has two S's on a board that the S isn't all that valuable on. He could play something like foes to set up the S and the triple A, knowing how many words the S starts, but that would hang on to the F, and the F is such a bad bingo tile, I think he has to get rid of it here. So I think the question will really be, does he want to play Fife, F-I-F-E, or does he want to play the alternate spelling, F-I-E-F? Uh, He's going to play it with the F there. That makes sense. The F bingos will score more and probably be a bit easier to start bingos, although I'm not actually sure on that. Uh, does anyone in the chat know which word starts more bingos, an F or an E? Um, leaving SSEO already having an E, I think the F for sure would be better here, but I don't actually know which one starts more bingos. Uh, Okay, before we even had time to really look at Max Rack, he drops four vowels. That makes a ton of sense. He leaves REC very strong. But again, there's now three lanes open. Mac is basically saying, I'm going to keep playing my game. Uh, I can't sacrifice too much to block. That P is pretty much impossible to block because you can't put anything next to XU. Uh, the T is a bit easier to block, but not when you have five vowels. And now Josh is getting close, and I do see a bingo through the T. So, um, yeah, he's, he's signaled to his opponent that he'd like to just reach into the bag to count how many tiles there are. So that must mean there are very few tiles left. Uh, yeah, I still think just glancing at the board, uh, th there's going to be a probably about fifteen, I would think, uh, seventeen unseen tiles. It's saying in Quackle. But I think that's also including Max Rack. So I think there just might be 10 in the bag. Um, so the, the bingo is through the T. Josh will see it. And here it comes. It's one of these Scrabble words, as I'd call them. It comes up a lot just being very high probability. Um, but probably not a word you would use in everyday life. So I appreciate our producer here putting some of these weird words onto the screen. Uh, that way we can sort of learn what some of these words mean. Uh, so Uri is shivering with cold. So it's an adjective. You can't put an S on it. And Soutanes is a long garment worn by clergymen. The more you know, huh? It does help to have a yeah. good vocabulary. And knowing the words helps knowing uh, if you can pluralize them, if you could put a, a D, an S at the end. It's very important. Um, the player seems to have very opposite racks right now. Mac has a lot of uh, low point tiles, whereas Josh mm -hmm. just drew the Q and the Z out of the, out of the bag. So this is going to lead to a very interesting uh, pre-end game and end game as we go forward. Uh, the computer's not loving Max winning chances right now, but really? the computer. That's interesting. But the computer is not realizing that Josh has a Q. Um, if they knew it had the Q, I think the percentages would look a lot different. Do we see a? I mean, there's no Q play. I don't see. Uh, no, like I, he and I'm not and seeing I don't one either. You can exchange now, right? That the bag is has too few tiles in it to be able to, to make that exchange play. There need to be seven in the bag. Right, the the Q might end up being the difference in this game. Uh, mm. Mac is probably gonna wanna hang on to an I so that if he draws the Q, he'll have somewhere to play it. Um, the A can help get rid of the Q sometimes when it, you can play QAT, for example, but there's no open T on this board. Uh, also, he has a C, so he could play that French word of sank, C-I-N-Q, through the N in loan, if he were to draw the Q. Uh, so these are the sort of considerations mm -hmm. players have to make while in this position. And yes, Robin, I'm going to put the 
the tiles into the YouTube chat right now. Uh, this is from Mac's perspective of what's unseen. So some of the tiles, of course, are on uh, Josh's rack. So Mac is looking at a very interesting pool, uh, knowing that the Q and the Z are both out. Uh, this is a very difficult turn, and he only has four and a half minutes to navigate. Like, the F is open, the P is open, he's getting close to bingos. Uh, if he were to draw, like, an N, he'd be very much bingo prone, but I don't think he can rely on a bingo here. I think, I think he has to be a bit more aggressive than that. Uh, so, there's three in the bag. So if he plays three or more, he'll be emptying the bag, giving Josh full knowledge. Uh, this is tough. The computer is liking pacier maybe at C8. Uh, so that's from the P in Tofi going down. And that makes sense mainly because it scores. Uh, it gets rid of some stuff and it would only leave him with two tiles to draw three. So he did five. So. If Josh can't get an out in two, he'd be looking in a pretty good position. But if he draws the I after that, he'd be losing. Uh, if Josh just has a big play somewhere, for example, he'd I, be losing. I love, okay, so I, I mean, I'm maybe reading more into this, but Josh uh, just put YA off, off to the side, or two tiles, let's yeah. say, off to the side. Um, I mean, could those, are the, is there an I that's unseen? There's, there's no I. The YA, maybe he wants to set up an R front hook, maybe. Um, oh, Picara. Okay, that is better. That's a word that I know, but I I hadn't seen here. Um, and now actually looking back at the sim, that one is the top simming play. It, it again has him at about 36% to win if he plays Picara, but if the computer knew Josh had the Q, I think that percentage would look very different. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but you, you also want to hang on to that I if you can. I, I know that's what he's thinking. Like, if he plays that I and then he draws the Q, it's like game over. But I, I think he, yeah, and the U is in the bag too. So he's thinking, like, there's so much to think about here. He just didn't have enough time. And even with that time pressure, he's going to be making the best play. So. I, I think he just has to be aggressive here and say, none of the other options are so appealing. I, I'm just gonna have to hope that I draw either the Q with the U. I think Josh is maybe holding Picara or no, maybe just checking the score. Um, possibly a hold because Mac has not drawn more tiles and with two minutes and 11 seconds left, you would definitely want to draw your tiles uh, and he'll take the provisionals anyways. So provisional tiles are when your opponent is considering challenging your play. You can uh, draw from the bag. He's drawn EAU. So he's happy to know that uh, he didn't draw the Q and that Josh doesn't have the U. So I think Max looking in a pretty good position here uh, if he can slow play and make Josh eat that Q. But the thing is he can still score with the Z. So uh, what are what are the high scoring plays that Josh has available to him? Um, like Zen is okay. sort of uh, maybe one of the more obvious ones, uh, forming ZA uh, with Picara. Uh, so that's in the bottom left. He plays Zen there, he plays Za there. Uh, yeah, what else could he really do? He's going to want to play slowly himself, right? If he plays too long of a word, it allows Mac to play sort of one by one. and. As we look at the scores here, we have to remember that Josh most likely is going to eat this Q, meaning that Max can get 20 more points. Um, so this is the sort of sequence that both these players are better than I am at working yeah. through. And both these players would love to have another maybe 20 minutes to think this through. Yeah. This is not easy. Um, Okay, I'm looking at the Quackle, and Quackle is saying that Zen wins, uh, as does Za in the same spot. So, I, really? I think that's obviously 
I, assuming Crackle has this right, sometimes it can be a bit um, off in some of these slower end games. But because it, it would leave Q-A-R-Y, the reason I think it might win is that Max Leave just doesn't score enough points. So Josh will still get another turn to put his Y down for a lot of points. So the 35 points from Zen plus whatever points he gets from Y can sort of uh, withstand the 20 points he's going to lose from the Q. And yeah, so the, he was happy to avoid that cube, but the three vowel draw might be his undoing. Um, yeah, Alex is pointing out what I said is that Crackle's not great at these end games where you're trying to stick the opponent with the tile. I know Cesar Del Solar is working on Macondo, his program that uh, promises to have better end games. Our pro our Technology here in Scrabble isn't quite to the level where it will be at one point. Um, it looks like Josh maybe is setting up something like Zonary through that O and T-Bowl, but he can't play so many tiles. I think he really has to play a bit slower here. Um, yeah, Billy's saying the same thing. Because uh, he's going to have to score twice big. And so if he plays off the Y and the Y won't land on anything, it just won't be enough. I think he's going to have to play Zen and then find another spot for the Y. That would be my intuition. Oh, and now Noah's saying that Zen does lose with slow play. Okay, that is that does make more sense because Josh is yeah. down nine. Um, so Zen does score 35, but remember with the Q, let's say it only scores 15. So that would only put him up uh, six, let's say. And then Mac having the tempo here would be enough probably to win. Um, so both players now down under three minutes. They're both working through, I'm sure, a zillion permutations here. Uh, uh, Adam is asking about Azo and Zoa. Uh, just trying to see, okay, so Azo would play above t bold. That's definitely an interesting idea. Um, playing even slower. Mac, of course, can go out in two, I would imagine. So you can't play too slowly. I guess one thing we haven't mentioned, Heather, where would that Y go after a Z play? Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking, I mean, maybe that's why Zoa might be a, a good option and keep that spot down at the bottom to play Yen parallel against right. uh, Picara. But I mean, the chances of that, that space staying open after Josh plays are, I think, pretty slim. So it's also yeah, wondering, yeah. can Josh set himself up for something? Um, I mean, one nice mm -hmm. thing about playing Zen in the bottom left is it does set up YA next to it for a lot of points. Um, I, I think Mac would just play maybe AE there to take it away, but sort of forcing your opponent to respond to a threat can be nice. Um, the, the Y doesn't really have so many great spots on this board like it could in many other boards. Mm -hmm. uh, Zen, Za. Okay, so yeah. we're going to play a bit slower with Za. That makes a lot of sense. Neither player has a back hook to Za, like a P for Zap, G for Zag, Zax, exactly. Why not Oyez is asked in the chat. Um, I think from the O and T bull, are you asking? It just wouldn't. Uh, you want to play a bit slower, like I was saying. You want to score big with the Z or the Z on one turn and then be able to get some points with the Y on the next turn. Uh, I think that would be the reason. It would be very tempting to want to score and play those big tiles off. Uh, but yeah, I think that that's showing the next level play on on Josh's part to rein that instinct in a little bit and say, I, I need to be able to score with both of those tiles <laughs> on two turns. Exactly. And uh, Mac is down to about a minute and a half. Uh, he probably already was thinking about what he would do if Za or Zen came down, but... I see him shaking his head. He's a bit nervous. He just plays off the E. Um, okay, so he's leaving Yuria. I'm guessing he's got a couple mm -hmm. spots for that. It's sort of hard to keep track of both of their racks here. Uh, it's easier <laughs> if you can just think on one person, like uh, as they only have to worry about their own tiles. Josh now is going to find a spot for the Y. The Y has to come down. Uh, where are those Yuria tiles going? 
uh, I would think he would have left himself a direct out, but I don't see one yet. Win comes down. That's a great play. So the Y spot, neither of us were seeing. Just a three-letter word, win. Uh, does, so that sets up Yuria, uh, which I think should be enough to win because Josh is holding 24 points. But uh, do we have the score updated? I was gonna say, yeah, I was going to say not, not just yet, but now it is. So it would be <laughs> 408, I believe. Or is, is 385 the score after win? No, it's 408. Uh, so oh. Oh, i got to do some math on the fly. Uh, there no, there I don't go. think there's a win here. Uh, there is a win, W-Y-N, and I think that win <laughs> might lead to a W-I-N win. Wow. Uh, Josh said he stole two games yesterday. I'm not sure if he stole one here. Uh, I'd love to it's see hard after to game. It's hard to It was yeah, so exactly. close. Uh, I, uh, a foot R is the, the play being found by uh, David in the chat, and Uriel uh, to the L is the other one. They both score nine, and... Neither win, so Max going to play a bit slower. But We're I don't also think slower is going to be enough here because Josh has for each Ari of his own. So they are, um, they so are we'll scrambling. A, yeah, 18 seconds, no time to think. Uh, it, you hope both players get the exact day. score. <laughs> he's got to hurry. Josh gets it down. He's so experienced. He's going to play one. Oh, he's just um, Max going to play okay. one. So UT. Seven seconds for Josh. He gets down his ski for fear. And the A, it's not going to be enough. Josh is going to pull this out. Uh, ooh, with zero seconds. Oh, negative one. He went uh, over. Uh, well, oh, my gosh. That was intense for first thing in the morning. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think I'm going to still be asleep. Like it's the weekend. <laughs> Wow. To go uh, down to seconds on the clock with just, you know, small points in between every every little play matters at the end. Um, I mean, it's great as yeah. a spectator, heartbreaking and wrenching and incredibly nerve wracking for players to be in those situations. No kidding. Um, uh, these are the games that just that make you so jittery and you just want to get up and stretch your legs and breathe yeah, a bit. As Josh is doing right now, he's giving he's doing a big stretch. I I, I hope he feels you should feel proud about pulling out that win. That yeah, well, really when you're tough. 10 feet tall, you really got to stretch out that body. <laughs> uh, that cue coming down on your rack in the last, I mean, and that's still just, pulling that's, it out. Your like, heart sinks. Yes. Unbelievable. Like, so how are we, going we to have the score yeah. as 422 so. to 411. Paul's asking, assuming the overtime didn't matter. It matters for points. Uh, if that clock is accurate, Mac will lose 10. So it'd go down to 401. Uh, it won't matter for this game per se, but the spread could come into play later in this tournament. Uh, 